Javier, this is the, the Norma machine from Correa. It seems a bit bigger than uh, we, a machine we looked at previously, the Experta. That is the case, is it? Yeah, basically the X axis is the same, uh, but the Y and Z axis change significantly in terms of a structure. So we're talking about a bed milling machine here. We're talking about a machine that the, the table is a moving axis, it's not a, co a traveling column machine. And what, what is the, the capacity? What is the, um, how big can the machine go? Well, the x-axis starts from uh, 2.5 and we can go up to 4.5. In this case, the cross travel is 1.250 and the vertical travel is 1.5 meters. You're operating a RAM style y-axis on this machine as well. Does that not uh, introduce the possibility, certainly if the axes are much bigger, of that sort of droop scenario when you're machining? Well, I mean, this, this model, uh, as all the models equipped with the RAM, we always have this problem with the RAM when the RAM is coming out. Uh, but in this case, because the RAM, the cross section of the RAM is bigger, the machine is more stiff and also the cross saddle is stronger, so the RAM drop effect is minimized compared to the Experta model. But again, we use the same mechanical system to be sure that the angular error of the tool is, is minimum. So on the biggest machine, or the biggest uh, machine within the normal range, what's the, the biggest y-axis? It's 1.250 millimeters. Okay, so it's quite big. Now, let's talk about the, the build of this machine here. We've got a two-piece casting, correct, with a column attached to the bed. Exactly, but one of the main differences that we improved from the past in these kind of machines was the, the, the space for the chip conveyors, for the longitudinal chip conveyors. In the past, we just uh, built... You used to have like a fabricated tray, didn't you, under the machine? Exactly, and, uh, and, uh, and, and now from the same, uh, from the same uh, uh, bed uh, coming from the cast side, we integrate the chip conveyor as well. So you've got kind of a channel at each side of the, of the casting here, haven't you, where a conveyor goes in. So are you less likely to get leakages and things like that? Yeah, exactly, absolutely. For, for leaks, it's much better and it's much more reliable and simple. And I'm interested in the type of market for this machine because it's, 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 not, a, it's not a machining centre, it's not a big machining centre, it's a bed milling machine. So why do people buy this style of machine tool? Well, normally people that uh, want to produce a different type of components with a certain uh, big uh, working envelope and uh, not producing uh, long series, but uh, short, medium series of different kind of components. And if you were to look at the, look, look at the Experta model, the normal model is the next model up, what can this machine do that the Experta can't? What, what's different? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, basically because this, the structure of the Norma is, is stronger, uh, from the application's point of view, the Norma will be more, will be better, and the performance will be better uh, for working for, for difficult materials, uh, hard materials like titanium, stainless steel, uh, hard steel. And is that partly down to the fact that it's just a bigger machine? You, you, you know, the column on this machine seems, seems significantly wider and bigger than the column on the Experta. Is, is that one of the main reasons? The structure, the structural elements, of course, the cross-section of, of these elements, but also the, the guiding system also is bigger, the number of shoes we use. And, and, and all, You're talking about the support of the RAM there, are you? The support of the RAM and, and the guiding system we use. And does it come, is there a change in the spindle as well here? Do you, do you have a more powerful output there? Yeah, well, the, the milling head is the same, but in, in this model compared to the Experta, we, we, we are able to utilize more power and more torque. And do you have the same options on the head on this machine? So what can people select from and to? Mm -hmm. Well, we have the same head options. I mean, we have the automatic induction heads in universal and orthogonal shape, uh, manual heads. And, uh, but basically we have the orthogonal biggest head, which cannot be mounted on the Experta and can be mounted on the Norma, which we call OAD, which it features the same technology as the UAD, but 90 degrees each rotating axis. And these are all just positional heads, are they? Yes, just positioning heads. And, and to what degree can you position the, um, yeah, the heads to? Yeah, because we are using our, our patent, uh, using the combination of two crowns. And is that what you call an orthogonal? No, the orthogonal, the orthogonal means the geometry between the, the angle between the two rotating axes. When we say orthogonal, 
the angle between the two rotating axes is 90 degrees. When we say universal, one is 45 degrees. Um, the, the, the ability of, of rotate is related to the, the system we use, uh, the Korea patent. Uh, the using of two crowns permits us to rotate every 0 0.02 degrees in both, in both uh, bodies. So the patented design that you're talking about, can anybody else offer, obviously not that design, but to do the same job? No, for, for two fixed crowns and, and to rotate every 0 0.02 degrees, nobody in the world can do that without invading our patent. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty unique feature. So for people watching then, you, you, you'd benefit from that because you want to get to more acute angles. Absolutely. The main difference between the universal and orthogonal is that the universal head cannot reach what we call negative angles. In this machine, the universal head cannot go up to this kind of negative angles. With the orthogonal head, in our case, in our design, you can go up to 45 negative angles in one way and 45 negative angles in another way. So you have more positions. Do you win many orders as a direct result of your patented head? Yeah, yes, yes, because uh, the ability of rotate every 0.02 uh, gives our customers a, 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 a huge, a huge flexibility. Okay, so let's let's put that out as a as a highlight as to why people buy these machines. The, the last point I want to touch on here is this tool changer. Um, well, this is modular, is it? Can can you adapt it? Can you add more tools? Yes, it's a modular system, and uh, normally the most standard um, uh, tool changer we are using now in these machines is a 40, 40 or 60 tools, but also we can, we can uh, equip the machine with the 80 tools tool changer. Because I look at this and I think if, if I, I know making comparisons to machining centers isn't necessarily correct, but I look at that tool changer and I think it's going to be a lot slower to go from, from uh, tool to tool than, than maybe a machining center. Is that right? Of course, it is, a slow, it is slowly compared to machining centers, but, at this, but on the other hand, it can load bigger and, and, and heavier tools because this is a milling machine. So it, it is more flexible, but sacrifice the speed. This is the concept. And it's an ISO 50, isn't it? You can have through spindle coolant and all those features too. High pressure coolant? Absolutely. We can, in, in, in our head technology, we, also, we always can, can use 70 bar coolant through for, for deep drilling. I said to you a minute ago about the highlights, one of the highlights being the head. What's the other reasons people buy these machines? What stands out? Well, the stiffness of, of, of this particular construction we use, uh, as, as we discussed, we use one of the biggest cross sections in the market for these kind of machines. And, and also the, 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 the linear guideways we use, the number of rollers also we use. So it is a real strong machine, uh, considering that we are using three LM guideways in the three axes, but this is really strong, it's strong from the cheap removal rate point of view. So Ian, the Norma from Korea, in your opinion, this machine, where does it fit in the marketplace? Who, who's going to buy these from you and who does buy them from you? Uh, these machines are mainly bought by the dye and mould industry. Uh, people who are looking for a larger capacity than their normal VMCs. Um, also general machine shops. And, and also on this type of machine itself, the Norma, we tend to get into the sort of uh, larger marine type sort of components. So what, what would the size what could this machine go up to? What is the biggest size? The biggest size on this on the Norma is 4.5 meter in the x-axis. Um, we can go 1.5 in the Z and 1.25 in the uh, Y. And how does the models work? How many is there in the range? Uh, they go from a 20 for two meter in the x-axis, uh, 20, 25, 35, and 45. And if you were to look at a machine as a standard, what what would it kind of come equipped with? Would it come equipped with a with a fixed head just for three axis machining or? This machine comes as standard with a UDG head, um, which is a 2.5 indexing head. Um, the head we've got on here at the moment is a 0 0.02 indexing head. Okay, so as standard though, the 2.5 that means you can you can angle to 2.5 degrees. To, well, you can angle to more than 2.5 degrees because the back and the front will move. What, what about the, the tooling mechanism, the tooling mount on this machine, the tools that you use and how many tools you could have? Tooling on this machine is a 30, 40 or a 60. And when we look at the Korea models that you supply from DTS in the UK, we have the Experta machine, which uh, is probably a crude word to say, but it's one under this. Is that right? Yeah, I think you'd be right in saying that, yes. This, this machine is, um, due to the nature of how it's built, uh, the column, the shoes, that, the bearings that are on the linear ways, uh, it's probably a more robust machine than the Experta. And is it a powerful machine? What, what, what 
what can we get out of this this sort of spindle? How fast is it and how powerful is it? This this spindle on this machine is 6,000 RPM. Um, it comes in at 990 Newton meters, so at 33 kilowatt. So it's it's quite a powerful powerful spindle. So it sounds to me like we're looking at a machine that is a real workhorse. That you know you, you're going to buy one of these because it's uh, you know chip removal rates on larger larger size constructions. There is that, yeah. I mean, it will remove a hell of a lot of chip um, chip rate, but also it keeps its, its accuracy is a, another main feature of the machine against its competition. The, the use the use of high pressure coolant often comes into play in the types of applications we're talking about. Is that something that features on these models as standard, or is that an option? It's it's standard at a low level, um, but we can go up to a 70 bar coolant pressure, variable coolant pressure. And this model here, the Norma from Korea, at DTS UK, is this your most popular seller? Certainly, the Norma and the Experta are, are our most popular seller out of all the Korea range that we do. And when you come up against stiff competition for a machine like this, which you will, how, what, what do you think sets it apart and why do you, why do you win that business? Um, sometimes this competition isn't so stiff, mainly for the reason being is that we do tend to do cutting trials and we, we actively want our customers to go and do cutting trials at our competition um, just to prove the point of how robust our machines actually are. And have you got an example of maybe a scenario where where you've won the order as a result of doing that? Certainly uh, within two months ago we had an order one um, it was a hole on a 30 degree angle um, no small hole it was drill and tapped M24 uh, we then went off machined other angles on the machine large cuts um, and asked our competition to do exactly the same, but then re recut the hole uh, with, the with the rigid tap, um, and then obviously apply a no-go-go no -go plug gauge, um, to which the competition, due to the nature of their head, actually fell down against us. So, so but the, the, the Korea machine didn't recut the thread, essentially, did, the, did what you'd no. hoped for it to do? Due to the mechanism of the, the dual hearth coupling on the machine, um, it went back to the same position and didn't didn't touch the, the thread one bit. And in buying a machine like this, how did DTS UK support their customers? Because a machine like this is a big investment, and granted, we see machines 20, 30 years old in the field, but you know, sometimes things do go wrong, and how do DTS go about solving those? We have a, a full um, quota of service engineers, basically, who come over to the factory. Um, normally, twice a year they came over, because obviously the technology is moving forward. Um, they're fully, fully factory trained electromechanical engineers. We send them out on the road with a full van, so we do carry spares on the road for some of the more, um, more common faults that we could, would have come across. And I think we've had this agency for some time now, so you get to know the ins and outs of the machine tools, don't you? We certainly do. I mean, DTS have had the agency now for uh, 12 years, um, and I think it's a it's good point to make is that the two directors along with myself, have been involved in Korea, my, me personally, for 17 years, the directors for into, into double figures, uh, double decades. And I think one point to say is as well, these come with a five-year warranty, don't they? They do come with a five-year warranty, so I think that shows the confidence that we have in the machine ourselves.